Well, first of all, thank you, uh, thank you for all, all of you for coming. It's a, a fantastic uh, turnout. And today is kind of the culmination of two, really two separate strands of public policy that we've been trying to uh, highlight since the new uh, form of county government took place. One is that we, we recognize that if we're going to make real progress on issues, we have to do it collaboratively between all of our different cities. Uh, we, we don't have one single uh, government here, and we have to have the individual cities buy in, and that has to be by choice. Those individual cities have to believe that it's in their constituents' best interest to cooperate and collaborate on issues. And so we've been trying to focus on a whole, a whole array of, of public, public policy issues from economic development to infrastructure to law enforcement to try to get folks on the same page so that instead of having 59 different strategies because we have 59 different cities that we start to figure out what do we have in common and how can we have uh, policies that are coordinated and, and so that we're pulling in the same direction. And today is a, is a great example of that because when we, when we announced that we were going to undertake this, we couldn't mandate it upon these cities. We were just asking them, we were extending a hand to them, and we hoped that we would have 10 communities that would join us uh, by this time. We announced that we were going to work on this last year, and we hoped that by this time we would have 10 communities sign up. As it turns out, and as you can tell uh, from how crowded this room is, uh, we have 21 communities as of now that have agreed to be part of that process with us. But it's not just about governments, it's also about uh, healthcare institutions and, and the players in our lo local healthcare scene, and whether or not they're cooperating and providing resources then to those individual communities. Uh, and we've made a lot of progress there as well, and you're going to hear the list of all of the healthcare institutions that are helping in this great effort, all of whom, by the way, were doing great work. And a lot of these individual cities were doing great work on health and wellness issues. Uh, but it makes sense for us to coordinate our efforts, especially in an era of, of shrinking resources. Now, what was underlying this particular push? Well, I think in, in, its, in its most stark terms, the reason that we had to address this is you have this, uh, you have this dichotomy in this, in this community where you have some of the greatest healthcare institutions, not just in the state or the country, but in the world, but it is not reflected in the healthcare outcomes of the people that live here. We know that we are behind national average and even state average in many ways in terms of your, your basic public health indicators, whether it be obesity or smoking or diabetes. And we know that these things are preventable and we're, we're determined to try to make this a, a, a public priority. And uh, those of you that are in the room that have run for office, and there's quite a few of you, you know that this hasn't been a, a core issue for most cities. It hasn't been a core issue for the county before, and it hasn't been a core issue really for the country as much as it should be. So this is our attempt to really put this on the map, not in a political way, but in a way that makes this an accepted expectation uh, for local government. So how did we, uh, how did we start that? How did we start that process? Well, first of all, we did a little bit of an assessment of where we stand right now. Now we know that right now we're ranked about 65th out of 88 counties uh, in Ohio in terms of public health measurements. We know that about 20% of our adult residents in Cuyahoga County smoke. By the way, for county employees, it was more like 35%. So we were overachieving or underachieving in that uh, area. We know that about 35% of adults in this county have been told by their doctor that they have high cholesterol. About 36% of adults in this county are considered overweight. And I knew this press conference was coming up, so I've lost 10 pounds in the last uh, month and a half because I didn't want to be uh, one of them. Uh, and 24% of adults were considered um, obese. Uh, so we recognize that this is more than just anecdotal. The, the, the data is out there, and we know, that it's, we know that it's true. Now, we started, like so many government entities did and individual companies, we started internally. So I just want to quickly go over what we've done. As one of the major employers in the county, there's about 8,000, roughly a little bit less than 8,000 now, employees that work for the county in one way or the other. Uh, and we've done some things internally to try to set an example and try to move the needle with our own employees. So we've gone to a 100 
percent smoke-free uh, campus initiative. As many of you know, uh, we actually had a designated area in this building. Uh, we had an atrium here which was completely dedicated to smoking. Uh, and it was a year-round facility. So we had the outdoor area that was all for smokers, and then we had an indoor shack that was for just concentrated carcinogens. It was, it, 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 and one of the things that we did symbolically just to change the culture, because we really did have a culture of smoking here, uh, is we knocked that down, and that's now we use it as a wellness court. So there's actually people uh, that exercise basketball, uh, volleyball, and, and so forth. This is part of trying to change our culture, our, our culture internally. We've also made changes in terms of our snack shops, vending machines. We have a farmer's market that we offer right here in this building. Uh, we have a wellness program called Vitality. Some of you might be familiar with it, but it's an online program that allows our employees to track their own level of wellness and activity. And, and, to, and it's, it's optional, uh, but we do have financial incentives that are built into it. So an employee can save up to $500 a year by enrolling in that. And we're the first, we're actually the largest public employer that has done anything of that kind in the state of Ohio. Now it is completely voluntary, but I can tell you as of this moment, 23% uh, of our employees have signed up under that program. And we're going to continue to build in financial incentives as time goes on. Now, there have been many success stories uh, in individual uh, uh, cities and government entities across the county. And just a few, I'll just mention a few of them. Uh, the County Board of Health has a smoke-free uh, uh, campus. Tri-C has an annual online, online health risk appraisal. Uh, Bedford Heights ha is building a community garden with a grant from the OSU uh, Extension. Uh, Orange Village has a workout facility and offers uh, for its fire and police, but also offers wellness fairs and screenings for employees. Cleveland Heights has something they call the Cleveland Clinic uh, Fitness Days. Uh, Shaker Heights offers on-site mammograms. Independence just provided biometric screens and health questionnaires uh, that are going to help with their own wellness planning. Strongsville has a health fair for employees and, and, and spouses. And of course, uh, there's the Healthy Cleveland Initiative, uh, which is doing many of those same things. What we wanted to do, though, with budgets being tighter than they've ever been before, it's very difficult for local government leaders to have significant new expenditures in any, any area, even in, in as important an area as public health. So we wanted to try to uh, perform a marriage, so to speak, between these great local health care institutions and cities that were looking at developing best practices in this area. And that's really what this announcement here today is all about. And I do want to mention all of the cities that have agreed, and we think there's more that have expressed an interest, but uh, we eventually had to cut it off for, for today's event. So 21 individual mayors and communities have committed, and they are as follows. Bay Village, Beechwood, Bedford Heights, Brooklyn Heights, Cleveland Heights, East Cleveland, Euclid, Independence, Lakewood, Lyndhurst, Moreland Hills, North Olmsted, Orange Village, Pepper Pike, Rocky River, Shaker Heights, Solon, Strongsville, University Heights, Warrensville Heights, and Westlake. And by the way, com if you combine all of that, you're talking about in excess of uh, half a million people in a county of 1.3 million or so, and that doesn't count Healthy Cleveland, which has its own separate initiative. Now you add another 350,000. So you're talking about in a majority of the county, a great majority of the county, uh, this is now going, these types of programs are going to be rolled out first to employees and then eventually to, uh, to the public um, at large. There's, there's a number of uh, mayors here that I'd like to recognize from some of those communities, and I'm sure I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss some of you, but I know Mayor Bain is here from Pepper Pike, Mayor Prosuk uh, from Bur uh, Brooklyn Heights. Mayor Mulcahy, I know, was here from uh, uh, Orange. Uh, there you are. Mayor Renda from, uh, from uh, Moreland Hills. Who am I missing in terms of my, my fellow mayors? Oh, there you are. Uh, Mayor Infeld from, uh, from University uh, Heights. And I know, um, uh, of course, Mayor Sutherland, you're going to hear from her from Bay Village. Um, and I know Mayor Sellers from uh, Warrensville was originally planning on being here. I think he's been delayed. I know if he was here because he's about eight feet tall. I know, he's, I, know I, would, I, I would not miss him uh, if he was here. Uh, 
my colleagues, some of my colleagues from county council are here as well, and I just want to thank them for their support and acknowledge them. Uh, Councilman Greenspan, I think Councilman Germana is here. Is there any other council members that I missed? Oh, and Councilman Miller. Anybody else I missed from county council? But the, but the council, this is, this is something that we try to have as a defining principle and, and part of our, what makes us uh, our brand, so to speak, of, of county government. And the council has been very um, supportive of that. Uh, we also have, and this is just as important, if not more important, as of today, 19 institutional partners that are going to provide in-kind services such as meeting space, uh, educational resources, uh, data evaluation, because it's very important that we establish uh, public health performance measures and then, and then measure ourselves, not be afraid of those measurements and be as transparent about that as possible, but that type of data evaluation is difficult and it's tough for a city to do that kind of evaluation on their own. Uh, advocacy and also what we call community coaches. So I want to uh, quickly list those as well. So we have the Academy of Medicine of uh, Cleveland in Northern Ohio, Better Health Greater Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland Clinic, which is a tiny little facility down the road. I never heard of it, but it's down, down the road. Uh, Cuyahoga County Board of Health, Cuyahoga Community College, Cuyahoga County Planning Commission, Diabetes Partnership of Cleveland, the First Suburbs Consortium, the George Gunn Foundation, Kaiser Permanente of Ohio, Kent State University, uh, College of Public Health, uh, Metro Health, of course, our own, uh, which we have a very special uh, relationship, Ohio State University uh, Extension, uh, Policy Bridge, the Prevention Research Center for Healthy Neighborhoods and the Weatherhead Institute for Family Medicine and Community Health at Case Western Reserve University, <laughs> St. Luke's Foundation, the Sisters of Charity Health System, uh, University Hospitals, of course, our other world-renowned institution here, and the Cuyahoga Health Access Partnership. Basically, everybody we asked ended up saying yes. Uh, there's still a few of the smaller organizations that haven't joined yet, but I anticipate that they will. So one of the great things about this whole process is some of those institutions had never been in the same room with each other in terms of coordinating their planning. So we're spending all of this money in all, the, all of these diverse ways, but it made sense for those <coughs> institutions, and we're happy that we facilitate some of those discussions for them to start figuring out, okay, where can, where can we, not just as competitors, but as partners, where can we align our, spendings to, our spending to have the greatest possible health impact? So those, that was very gratifying to see that in some of our planning meetings where people were saying, I've heard of this person, I've heard of this organization before, but we need to figure out if there's ways that we can coordinate what we do. Now, we're, we're, we're beginning this whole process with work sites first uh, for a couple reasons. Number one is we know we'll get our biggest bang for the buck in terms of uh, uh, the investment of dollars that we make uh, because when you have kind of a, a captured audience, you can, you can have a greater, greater impact. And I think it's also important for individual cities to know what they can do internally before they take some of those lessons and then uh, spread them out uh, in the community as a whole. This is a pattern we followed when I was the mayor of Lakewood. We did an internal wellness program, but then we try to take those lessons and, and apply them to the community uh, at large. So in the first year or so, I think most of the programs you'll see will be with city workers, and then I think it'll expand out very quickly after that. By early next year, so we're going to do that this year. By early next year, we're hoping that we'll have more broad-based, community-based health activities uh, because we think the word is going to spread that this is working. Although, if you, if you add up all the employees that are represented by these institutions, we're talking about a large percentage of the population. <laughs> so I'm hopeful that if it's a really robust program internally, you'll actually see the public health indicators start to change. There's also, keep in mind that you have, maybe you'll have one, one member of a family uh, is, is a government employee that has exposure to these programs. They start to turn their personal health indicators around. That tends to be uh, contagious, to use a health uh, term, but in a very positive way because the rest of the family members start to see what can be done and how it can be done. So uh, we're very, we think that's a strategic way to start the program. So at this point, I've, I think I've, I've probably spoken enough. I want to uh, turn it over to some of our, uh, our, our partners, and I want to begin, if I could, with uh, Mayor Sutherland 
uh, my my neighbor and uh, the uh, mayor of the great city of Bay Village. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, a great pleasure to be here with um, our institutional partners and also with my other uh, mayoral friends and um, everyone else who's in the room and who's interested in this issue. And of course, um, with the county executive's leadership, um, this is this is something that I think that the time has come. We have got to address this. We have got to address it together. We cannot do it um, as separate communities. And um, the city of Bay Village has already been involved in um, in some small initiatives, and it can you know you can change the culture in your own organization uh, even by doing things like not allowing the police chief to bring donuts to the staff meeting anymore, <laughs> and um, and that you know that took a little while to to implement, but he he's got it now. And uh, but we need to do much much more, and we can't do it by ourselves. And and as um, as uh, Mr. Fitzgerald mentioned, our resources are so tight uh, in, in this day and age and in, in our municipal world that we cannot add anything more to our budget. So if there's something that we can do on a collaborative basis, we are willing to do it. Um, and so I am really looking forward to rolling this out to our employees. And I also want to mention just on a personal note that uh, health and wellness has been very, very important to me for probably most of my life. I was raised in a family that was very focused on low-fat cooking. I have continued that with my own family. I work out four times a week at least, do yoga, and um, not so, I, I'm not so good on stress reduction, but I'm hoping to work on that. So I am really looking forward to this, not only for my, my employees, um, but also for, for myself. And, um, and I just thank you all for being here. I think it's going to be a great initiative, and thank you for your leadership. Great. Stay up here if you, if, if you would. Th okay. uh, thank, uh, thank you, Mayor Sullivan. And just to follow up on something uh, that she said, uh, is if you look at the communities and the elected officials that are represented, uh, it cuts across all of your demographic, uh, demographic uh, uh, lines. It's the entire scope of the county from north to south and east to west, uh, Democrats and Republicans. We've got to make sure that uh, there, there's a disturbing trend, I think, nationally to try to make these issues political. They're not political. It's public health. There's nothing political about obesity rates or smoking rates or diabetes. And so uh, it, we've got to make sure, I think, at the local level, we've seen, unfortunately, how that discussion has sometimes been derailed uh, with other branches of government. We've got to make sure that we set a very good pattern here. And as she mentioned, this isn't a mandate. If people don't want to participate in it, if cities don't want to participate in it, we're not going to force them. We didn't pass a mandate down to the cities. They've agreed to, uh, to partner with us, and so it's a, it's a collaborative, voluntary partnership, and I think that's, that's, that's important. And I, I didn't know you worked out four days a week. I was going to challenge you to a push-up contest, but we can, yeah. we can, we can wait, wait for that some other time until I'm in better shape. Um, at, at this point in time, I'd like to uh, recognize, if I could, uh, the CEO of uh, the Cleveland Clinic Organization, Dr. Toby Cosgrove, to say a few words. Doctor? Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. Well, uh, first of all, uh, good morning, and thank you very much for being here. Uh, and I want to congratulate you uh, for leading the same way that you did in Lakewood uh, with this initiative. I think it's great uh, where they're moving on towards wellness. And I think this is an opportunity for all of us to come together and improve the quality of life in Cuyahoga County. Uh, Cleveland Clinic has been on a journey now for some period of time. Uh, we decided that we needed to move from sickness care to uh, wellness and health care. Uh, and what we did was, starting in 2005, uh, we made our campus smoke-free. Uh, and then we stopped hiring smokers. And I'm pleased to tell you this has results. We're now down to 8% of our employees. Uh, smoke, and we turned our attention to the problem of obesity uh, by taking the sugar drinks out, by making 40 changes in our cafeteria, uh, and by taking uh, the uh, f deep fryers out of the uh, cafeteria. I personally wheeled them out myself, um, and um, then uh, we changed uh, the food in the vending machines. Uh, my personal loss is the Snickers bars aren't there anymore, which is real really hurts. Uh, but uh, And then we offered uh, exercise opportunities for our employees. 
uh, free way watchers, free curves, free access to our gyms uh, and exercise. We now have 20,000 uh, uh, visits to our exercise facilities annually. Uh, and I'm pleased to tell you now that we've lost 300,000 pounds at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, this is a start. We probably have a couple million more to go, but you know, a journey of a thousand steps starts with a, with a single step. Um, and so we have uh, really made significant progress. The other thing I think it'd be interesting to know is that all these steps and, uh, and beginning to incent financially people to go into uh, disease management and uh, promote wellness has begun to show a positive ROI. Uh, we have bent the curve of our health care costs. Uh, and over the last couple of years, our inflation rate uh, for our health care costs has been less than 2%. Uh, and we figure we've saved about $15 million uh, in the last two years uh, in the process of doing this. So it not only is a, makes for a healthier community, it makes good economic sense. And just finally, uh, one word, uh, smoking breaks. Uh, just so you know, employees who smoke take two weeks a year in smoking breaks. So there's probably a very good reason for productivity to try and uh, get people out of smoking. So again, congratulations. Congratulations to the 21 uh, mayors who have joined in this uh, movement. I think this is a terrific initiative for the county. Uh, and I'm fully supportive as far as, and so is the institution. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Um, at this time, I'd like to recognize uh, Mark Moran, CEO of uh, Metro Health, and uh, for to, to say a few words. Mark? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, Mr. Fitzgerald, thank you for having uh, me and uh, the Metro Health system here. Thank you, mayors and uh, county council members. Appreciate you being here. Uh, uh, like Dr. Cosgrove and the uh, Cleveland Clinic, Metro Health has been uh, proud to implement some of the uh, uh, you know, employee health programs to get this, uh, to get uh, uh, kind of a healthy uh, institution going. Uh, we've uh, implemented employee uh, screening and we have a, a program called Metro Healthy uh, where employees join and they uh, get a health screening and then they're directed to health care uh, providers in our system. Uh, we have also uh, banned smoking on our campus. We've taken trans fats out of the, uh, uh, out of the uh, cafeteria and we've also, I don't think we've gone, uh, the Snickers are still there at Metro <laughs> Health, but, but we'll, uh, so, so come on over Dr. Koshko. <laughs> I, th I think, uh, you know, but we all, I think, are uh, uh, trying to get to the same uh, kind of improved uh, personal wellness, improved uh, public health uh, uh, through the kind of behavior that we're uh, creating uh, for our employees. I think one of the things that we have been emphasizing as well is uh, pediatric wellness and in the uh, we're going to celebrate, I think this week, the first year of our pediatric wellness program where we're trying to do an intensive uh, interaction with kids about the behaviors, their eating, their exercising. And I just thought it would be interesting to uh, take uh, one young man's, uh, uh, he wrote me a letter talking about how much he enjoyed the program. He's a high school boy who's been coming to our pediatric wellness center. We have about a thousand patients using this now. And uh, here's what he wrote about his experience. What, what really helped me make my decision to get in shape was throughout my childhood and early teens I was bullied a lot. From family and friends because of my weight, it was so bad that it made me go through stress and depression. And he goes on to describe uh, what happened as he got involved in the, in the pediatric wellness program. I started to eat fruits and vegetables, drinking a lot of water, also to, of course, exercise. After a few months, I lost 28 pounds and ended up losing 60 pounds. Uh, my life changed so much. Now it's a lifestyle for me. I just want to help people who want to change, not only make their outside different, to make their inside different as well. Changes in culture take changes in individuals, and I think that programs like this 
uh, uh, like, like the County Health Alliance and like the uh, institutional participation that we're talking about today, uh, the leadership of the mayors and the leadership of council, uh, those are the things that change individuals and they change individuals' lives. So thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald, for leading Thanks, this. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank for you. having us involved. Sure. Uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Giselle Robinson Green. Uh, she's a senior VP and chief medical officer of the uh, Sisters of Charity Health System. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Giselle Green, and I uh, am here representing the Sisters of Charity Health System, which in the city of Cleveland takes up the face of St. Vincent Charity Medical Center and the Sisters of Charity Foundation of Cleveland. We were just very delighted and elated when we heard about the uh, call to action, and we're very grateful to be part of that, and we thank you for the invitation. Um, I'd like to just echo some of the comments that have been made already. I think all of your health care institutions here in the city have uh, gone through, are in the process of going through that cultural transformation of uh, the smoking bans, uh, getting rid of the trans fats, addressing the vending machines and exercise programs, et cetera, for employees. I think we're all doing that. Um, and uh, it's a necessary first step, I think, uh, in all workplaces to start with the employees. Uh, and then we can branch out to the rest of the citizens. It is an individual by individual effort. So despite the fact that we have all the mayors here in the room and all the institutions here in the room, we've got to go one by one person by person to transform the culture here in Cuyahoga County and move the numbers to more healthy numbers. Uh, to that end, one of the things that we think we could do uh, at St. Vincent Charity Medical Center to assist in this effort uh, is uh, put forth some of the um, uh, efforts, uh, make them available to the county, some of the efforts that we have done in the field of health literacy. Uh, our foundation and our hospital uh, have embraced health literacy uh, at, uh, for a very long time, many years, and we are also in partnership with Project Learn. One of the things that we did a few years ago was to rewrite all of our literature for patient information to a sixth to eighth grade level, because if you can't understand in writing what's being given to you, it's very hard to follow discharge instructions once you go home. It's very hard to do the review on what's happened in the hospital if you can't understand what you've been given. So we put an emphasis on health literacy, and we think that for this initiative to be successful, there will need to be an emphasis on health literacy um, uh, countywide. And so I want to applaud the effort uh, of the County Alliance I want to let you know that we're very grateful and pleased to be proud, part of it, and we stand ready to assist the county any way that we can. Great. Thank, Thank you, Doctor. You. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I want to recognize uh, Dr. Michael uh, Nakamovitz. He is the president of Physician Services and Corporate Health uh, for the University Hospitals Health System. Doctor? Uh, thank you, Ed, and uh, we're, I'm very pleased to be here representing University Hospitals. Uh, pleased to be here with the other healthcare leaders and the mayors representing our various communities. Uh, University Hospitals has been in this community for 150 years, uh, serving it through quality healthcare, through healing, teaching, and discovering, such as our mission. And we'd like to continue that tradition as part of the County Health Alliance and taking advantage together with our partners of programs that we have in place and others have in place that can effectively be <coughs> replicated in different components of the community to the advantage of all its residents. Uh, you know, like others, we've embarked on a very ambitious program of empowering our employees to take control of their own health. And last year in the initiatives that we had in healthy behaviors and healthy eating and exercise, uh, I'm pleased to say that we served 1.5 billion uh, portions of fruit and vegetables, and we had 3.6 million steps taken on our main campus as people embarked on these adventures. Um, 
we also created a, an accountable care structure for our own employees, which allowed us to provide a formal structure for the resources uh, and incentives which we provide for the employees as part of their health care and other benefits. The, as far as wellness is concerned, we really do think that wellness goes also into the sphere of well-being and life balance. And to that end, uh, we would like to offer the uh, expertise and services of the Connor Integrative Medicine Network, which is based at our New Ahuja Medical Center at Network, me Medical Center at Beechwood. Uh, this program offers a unique holistic approach, utilizing uh, alternative and complementary techniques, such as acupuncture, meditation, yoga, Reiki, and we think that these uh, modalities could be introduced into some communities and also uh, dis dispersed even further than they are now to promote the wellness uh, of our residents and our workers. Um, lastly, I can't uh, not reiterate what uh, uh, Mr. Morantz, Mark Moran said about childhood obesity. We would like to commit the resources of Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital with its various programs on childhood obesity to tackle this public health epidemic. Uh, we think this is something we can all collaborate on in terms of education of both parents and children to focus on early identification and intervention on childhood nutrition and exercise. Uh, once again, I want to thank you, Ed, for inviting us here. Uh, we would like to participate with our partners in making Cuyahoga County the healthiest county in Ohio and indeed the healthiest in the nation. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Doug. Uh, just a couple more words and then we'll, uh, we'll adjourn. I, I really appreciate everybody uh, that came out. The mayors uh, and all the city representatives that are here, it takes some political courage to take on this issue because this isn't something where you can control all the variables. And anytime politically you say you're going to do something but you can't control it, there's, a, there's an element of risk there. And so I appreciate you uh, embracing this and, and, and taking, uh, taking this risk. I, I want to thank our own staff that helped put this together, uh, Jennifer Schofield and her team and all the people from our HR department that have, again, tried to make this incredible shift. What we try to do at the county is we're trying to change in a lot of different ways on a lot of different issues on integrity issues, on efficiency issues, and try to develop a whole new culture of how we do things here. And this is an important part of it. It's consistent with those other things. And, I, and I'll just leave you with this, with this thought, and that is that uh, I think most people sense that uh, Greater Cleveland area is in the middle of a, a turnaround economically. We know that. We know that our economic indicators are now outperforming uh, the rest of the state and a lot of parts of the country. We're at about a point behind the national and the state unemployment numbers. And we know that we have several billion dollars worth of projects between the Medical Mart and uh, the casino and the East Bank of the Flats and, and the Cleveland Museum of Art and all these things. All these are great projects. And we know that it's going to improve our overall economic base. So we know that you can turn around a situation that's headed in one direction economically. We know that we can do it in terms of local government in terms of either your individual cities or the way the county government has been functioning at least in the last year and a half or so. And we can do the same thing on health indicators. It's going to be, I think, a longer road. It's going to be tougher. It's going to take a lot of individuals that decide they're going to turn their life around. But um, what I'm hoping we'll be able to show is as we are as transparent with this process as we possibly can, that you'll start to see those health indicators move. There is no way any individual city could do it. There's no way indivi any individual county government could do it. There's no way any individual health care system could do it. The only way we are going to turn around the trend lines that were so negative would be if there was a collaborative effort. It's the only way it possibly could have happened. I'm not saying we're there yet, but we've, we're, we're starting with the necessary ingredients. The people that are here in this room, I would just ask you, to, to stick with us as we continue this process. It's going to be a long process, but I think we've got the, the right players, we've got the right team that we put together, and all of it's voluntary, so you just have, you have my gratitude, and I think in the long run, you'll have the gratitude of the, of the residents of this county as we become not just known for our, our great medical research or, our, or the great surgeries that we can perform or the other health interventions, but also uh, our actual public health indicators, how healthy 
the people that live in this county uh, actually are. Thank you uh, for coming. If there's media questions, I'll, uh, you can talk to anybody you want after it's over. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.